taken the liberty of gathering the three newest soft top convertibles you can have on the market right now. They are the Arbath 500C, the VW Golf Cabriolet, and the Mini Roadster John Cooper Works. But just to set the ball rolling, we're going to include a fourth vehicle, the Audi A5 convertible, 2 litre Quattro, just so we can get a good idea of these three other vehicles compared to a much more expensive, high spec vehicle. It starts pricing at a whopping 550 grand which is a lot more expensive than the others and in typical Audi fashion you need to specify quite a lot of the things that are on a good Audi. I love the way the car is made as well, it's made really solidly. Obviously chopping its roof off has affected um, how it feels in, in certain respects. There is some scuttle shake which you can feel from a convertible, which is unsurprising. Very comfortable car this. Also comes with uh, Audi's drive select system, which used to give you about three modes, maybe four modes, now it's gone up to five, which is uh, perhaps getting a little bit too clever for itself. This is open top motoring, isn't it? Sitting at the traffic lights, everybody can see you, proud of your purchase. But what's it like when you give this Audi the beans? Are there any issues aside from being slightly underpowered and having a heavy drivetrain thanks to the Quattro? Another issue is the um, steering. I know it's adaptive, but when you get to a corner and you're in dynamic mode, it feels like it's just become set in concrete. It's like all your tires have just become deflated. I can see what Audi are trying to do. They're trying to make it, make it heavier when you're going faster and when it knows you're cornering. But there's a difference between heavy and feeling. Another thing is, is that you really can't hear this engine. 155 kilowatts is not a lot for this big car, but you would like to have some sort of oral entertainment when you're going quickly like this. And the Quattro is not exactly helping with fuel economy either. We're averaging in the 12s overall, and uh, it's been very difficult to get that down below 10. Oh dear, so it appears as so the Audi is good at one thing and one thing only, being a soft, comfortable cruiser. Armed with this information, we can now turn back to our three soft top contenders. What if I told you you could get an Audi, but for VW money? That in essence is the VW Cabriolet, a car that most certainly needs to be included in any soft top challenge. The controls of this car feel identical to the Audi and that's because in many ways this is an Audi. Of course this is the would be the equivalent of the Audi A3. The detuned TSI engine is uh, not overwhelming the chassis at all. It's really nice to drive surprisingly in a mildly sporty manner. Put your foot down great confidence knowing that everything's going to be okay. Engine noise is a bit droney though, wouldn't you agree? It's not exactly setting my heart racing, but I'm enjoying this windy road, uh, to be honest, I think a little bit more than I did in the Audi, even. a lot 
lot of appeal here. The ride is brilliant. It's really comfortable. I would definitely say it's on par with the Audi. The steering is less um, heavy, but it's fearsome. It's perfectly good. Which is quite a surprise. So we knew this golf was going to do the practical things well, but it's doing a little bit more than we asked of it. So good car. Very good car. VW Golf Cabriolet is offered in two power specifications, 90 kilowatt and 118 kilowatt. This car retails in the region of 300,000 Rand with a few extras.
I know the VW is the sensible one and the Audi is the overpriced big one but really I think this is probably my favorite I I so love driving it every chance I get I'm hopping into that instead of the others but loving a car is not a scientific tool because there's one other car left in our challenge the mini John Cooper works Roadster Yes, it's 150,000 Rand more than the Arbath 500C, but there's one other problem that you notice as soon as you step inside the vehicle. It's got more squeaks and rattles than a toddler's playpen. Then of course you get this, the Mini Roadster. This one happens to be the 155 kilowatt John Cooper Works version. And its engine is so amazing. Every time you lift off the throttle, there's this huge whistling sound as the wastegate comes into action. And you've got sport mode, and the traction mode, and the burble through the exhaust, and all that petrol burning and popping as it exits. You need to drive it on a smooth road, though. Anything less than smooth, and it's pretty bumpy and pretty shaky. I also have to say there's quite a few driver aids in this car. It feels like it takes away some of the fun element. Watch this drag race that we had with the Fiat and you'll see that up until about third gear, the Fiat keeps up. All of the minis, uh, trash control aids and everything else hold it back a little bit. I mean, this is a very powerful, fast car and a very small car. If you don't know what you're doing, it could really fight you a little bit. <laughs> Look at this footage of the Arbar 500C leading the John Cooper Works Mini into corners. The Mini's not exactly catching up out of the bend. With the rolls reversed and the Mini in the lead, the Fiat undoubtedly says trouble keeping up with the Mini in faster sweeping bends, where the Mini can harness its 55 extra kilowatts and forego any electronic intervention from its driver aids. What about practicality? Which has the fastest roof and which boot is able to hold our uh, special laundry basket? Now we must choose a winner from our soft top shootout. The Golf Cabriolet is undoubtedly the everyday usable vehicle. It's nice to drive. It's competitively priced and very well made. It's a good alternative to the more expensive Audi. Between the racier 
competitors, the Mini and the Arbar 500T. The Mini for me is not well made enough and doesn't make the most of its 55 extra kilowatts. Which is why if I was buying a soft top convertible, I'd go for the Arbar 500C, the car you see here before you. It is the cheapest of the four competitors, the most engaging to drive and compared to the Mini, surprisingly fast and agile as well.